the Cardinal King, inviting you back into the Cardinal Cave. And today we're going to learn how to make custom styles in Dream Booth for Mid Journey AI. So join us on this journey. All right, guys, I'm going to show you how to make some custom styles. If you haven't seen the last videos where we show you how to AI art yourself, uh, you're going to want to check those out. I'll put a link up here because we run through the whole step of grabbing images and whatnot step by step and hug and face step by step. And I'm not going to do that this video just because if you've been with me for a while, then you'll know what's up with this. So I suggest you stop the video here. Go check out the video up in the link. And we're going to get to it right now. So... I was very inspired by a Reddit post I saw that had someone make Polaroids that came out very realistically and very cool. So one of my favorite, um, you know, directors, movie directors is Andrei Tarkovsky, and he's a legend, right? His movies are fantastic. They're deep. They're awesome. You think about them for months after you're done watching them, right? So he has a set of Polaroids, which I absolutely love, and... These Polaroids, which I'm showing off here now, um, have a definite like style and atmosphere that very much captures his eye and a little bit of his soul. So I decided to go ahead and make a training set out of these. So these are 29 images in his style. It took me a while to find some of these, but they all look great. So... If you've been with us before, again, we are going to make a Photoshop document that, or whatever image processor you want that is 512 pixels by 512 pixels. You're going to put these in to that, and that's how you get all of these, right? It's incredibly critical that you prefix these the same name as you're going to use as your instance prompt. So AT001 is going to be our instance prompt. And it's in incredibly, incredibly critical that you rename all of these with that same prefix in the front. So after that, we are going to go into Hug and Face. And like I said, if you've been with us before, you know you have to make an account here. You have to go to the model card for the 1.5 model. And you have to subscribe to that. It'll take you a second to get on there. After that, you make an access token. And once you have the access token made, you're going to copy your access token here. You don't ever show anyone this, right? Because that's basically like you giving them permission to log into your account. So after that, we're going to go into the Google Colab. All of these things are going to be linked down in the description below. Okay, guys? So don't fret. Everything's there. So this collab, if you haven't used it before, you're just going to run this cell, wait till it's done. You're going to plug in your access token here, run this cell, wait for it to be done. And it'll be a little green check mark here once it's done. You're going to run this cell, wait for it to be done. And here you're going to want to plug into this where it's a save to G drive. Um, I would suggest that you either start a new Google account so that you can have it in a G drive that's empty or you empty out the one you already have, but you want an empty G drive account because these files are real big. Um, anyways, so our model here is AT001. So we're gonna plug in AT001 output here. Run this guy. It's gonna ask you to log into your Google, Google Drive account, which is fine. So here, which is instance prompt. Our instance prompt is AT001. Same thing we prefixed in the last one. Um, and here in the class prompt, we're going to put Polaroid style. If you're training a, say, let's say we wanted to do Van Gogh's art, right? Then you would maybe do painting style. Um, let's say that you were doing some, like, crazy anime art. You would do anime style, or you could do illustration style both of those seem to work but for now we will go back to picture so i want to make sure this at001 here and want to make sure this is polaroid there um someone asked in my last video how he can train like him and his friend or how you can train two concepts you do that here 
So let's say we, uh, Andy Warhol is also a very prolific Polaroid artist. He used this camera called the Big Shot, which is this awesome big Polaroid that you have to like shuffle back and forth to focus. So we would do, we would say grab another 30 images that Andy Warhol has, and we would name them with the prefix AW01 or whatever prefix you want, as long as it's the same one. And then we would do the class prompt Polaroid picture again. And that lets the machine know that like, oh, AT001 is Andrew Tarkovsky's pictures. And then AW01 is, you know, Andy Warhol's pictures. And then we can kind of merge those however way we want when we do the prompting, right? So you're going to want to run this cell then after this is all customized to your needs. Run this guy, upload your images. And we have 29 images, so usually here, where it says max training step, we do the number of images times 100. So that would be 2,900 for this, this set. Um, I usually like training more, like 40-ish. But uh, for now, this is good, so we'll run this. This step takes about 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, to even longer than that, depending on how many steps you have. So you're going to have to have some patience there. We're going to want to run this guy. We're going to run this guy, and that generates a little four-image uh, preview so you can verify your results. If that's all good, then that's great. If not, then you're going to have to rerun the whole thing over again. Um, you are going to want to convert it into the 16-bit um, float point here because it'll save you a lot of space if you have a lot of these. So then this is going to spit out a CKPT file. And you can plug that into your web UI. Like I said before, if you haven't seen those first uh, videos, all that stuff is run. I, I, I hold your hand while I walk you through all that type of stuff, right? So pause the video. Go ahead and check those out if you haven't already. So I'm going to show you guys some results that I had with the Tarkovsky set. And I got these. I, I went ahead and put them in a Polaroid frame in Photoshop just to make them a little bit more authentic looking. But this, I think it kind of hits the nail on the head. Like it has that like creepy nostalgia thing going on. Um, this one's great. Like this looks like a dude who could have, you know, straight out of the Soviet Union. Um, this one's insanely creepy. Looks like not of a nightmare. Uh, this one really hits that stalker aesthetic. Like it looks like they're in a, a dreamland that shouldn't exist. Uh, this one's insanely creepy. I've been watching Solaris, so I, I prompted the Cosmonaut into into there. Um, this is like the sleep paralysis demon that haunts your nightmares. Uh, I had to have one happy one, so I did a woman uh, in 80s clothing, which is fantastic. This one has something kind of nostalgic about it. I like this one. Like, There's a little bit of sorrow and like the color grade and... You know, it looks like the last time you saw a lover or something. This one hits that Tarkovsky thing real well, though. And one of the things I'm really impressed by is just, like, all the little physical artifacts that Polaroids do have. I mean, like, there's some fading over here. Like, the shutter didn't quite open all the way, so there's, like, a little bit of a, a black spot from the shutter curtain. This is an abandoned cabin. Again, has those cool artifacts. Um, this one looks like a photo you would take if you went to Chernobyl. Abandoned nuclear power plant. The inside of the abandoned nuclear power plant. Man, it's there's something ethereal about even like these washed out parts. This one looks like the uh, roller wasn't good or the film was very expired and it just crinkled up here. Just these little light leaks and burns and stuff are just awesome. Um, yeah, I'm happy with these results. Man, this one's real good. That's another uh, forgotten lost lover. And you're necessarily just, you can use it to train on anything, right? So um, I'm going to show you guys a set that I trained um on the art of kobe whitmore 
And these are kind of special to me because I, I learned how to paint from the um, materials that he left for the famous artist school. So I, I have a connection to this artist. Um, he's a very contemporary, like awesome artist. He did a lot of American illustrations. I love that style. Um, and there's also kind of an, an ethics thing too, right? Like I, I, I never trained my stuff on, well, for the most part, don't trade my stuff on any living contemporary artists. Like I love like the old masters and I, I kind of feel like I have a little bit more to learn from them. But, um, yeah, I think these are, these are nice. Like there, there's obviously some like digital artifacts in here stuff. I don't think the technology is hundred percent there, but I, I can see it being there in a while. Right. So we're, we're kind of in those baby steps, but we're pioneers of that. Some of these, like, maybe the lips aren't rendered as a painting would be, but the hair definitely is. Uh, this one's a little bit more graphic. I think this one's fantastic looking. Look at that. And this one kind of has the hair and a little bit of the eyes going. But yeah, and I, and I also failed at training styles. Like, um, I try to do Alex Ross and just... The machine can't do it because, you know, he's he's a, a fantastic artist. He's one of the best living artists, in my opinion. And uh, a lot of the, the art he does with gouache is just like the, the point of it is that you don't see any brush strokes. Right. So, I mean, this is the best the machine could do. And these are great. But I feel like the, the training model is a failure. I trained it on 96 images. 9,000 and some steps. It was like a two hour wait for the collab to be done. And it just. I didn't feel like it was there. Um, it might just be my prompting. I might have to like up my prompting game a little bit to take advantage of it, but it's just it's just not happening. Which I mean is great, and like my respects to Alex. He's like I said, one of the greatest living you know artists of our times. He is the Norman Rockwell of the modern era. But the machines, I don't think they can ever replicate what he does, which is fantastic. All right, guys, that has been the video. If you want to support the channel, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Do those very goofy things that YouTubers ask you to do. If you want to or support us monetarily, you can buy our print from the print store that's going to be down below. Let me know what you guys thought. I love reading your comments. This has been the Cardinal King, out.